Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm doing a library haul. Um, this, uh, all the books that I'm going to share with you today are all titles that I have borrowed from my public library. Um, I mentioned in the previous library haul that um, what I like to do is place holds on all of the new material that are coming into my public library and check them out. I just really like to understand like what's going on in industry and like follow along like new titles and understand like what people are talking about on videos and in blog posts and whatever. Um, I don't necessarily read everything that I borrow um, and I don't necessarily take home everything that I uh, place holds on, um, but I have been reading more graphic novels at least in the last month than I have probably previously. Um, I think part of it is just that I'm not buying as much manga at the moment and so I'm being kind of more led towards graphic novels at the moment. Um, you would think that because I'm not buying as many graphic novels that it would start like encouraging me to go deeper into my shelves and read through some of my TBR, some of the books that I haven't read yet. Um, I'm still reading quite a lot of manga. I just, uh, for some reason, when I'm buying less manga, I'm reading less manga. Um, maybe that happens with you as well. So right now I'm borrowing a lot of graphic novels and I'm reading a lot of graphic novels so that's just sort of what is happening. Um, I haven't read all of the titles that I'm going to share with you but I'm going to share with you now anyway. Um, at least show you what I've got checked out currently. Um, I'm not going to go back and talk about the titles that I haven't read later on. I'm just going to keep moving forward. I just don't have time to go back and talk about them but uh, if you're interested about any of the titles I do uh, blog about them um, as well as I have a Goodreads so you can check out my Goodreads. Uh, the links will be down below um, if you're interested in finding out what I'm reading as I'm reading it. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll just share with you what I've got currently checked out from the library. So the first title that I have to show you is the Zelda Twilight Princess or Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess by Kira Himekawa. I am under the impression that this is a new series, but I am not entirely certain. I've never read any of the Zelda manga and I have uh, surprisingly, never played any of the Zelda games, so I don't really have that close association with Zelda that a lot of uh, nerds do. Um, you would think that I would, but I I really don't. Um, it looks like a fairly decent manga. Um, like Here's a pretty nice looking panel or set of pages. Um, so I don't know, I'm, I'm probably going to give it a try. You know, it doesn't take all that long to read a small volume of manga like this. Um, so yeah, I'm interested in checking this one out and at least experiencing Zelda now. The next title that I picked up is Anne of Green Gables, a graphic novel by Mariah Marston and Brenna Thumbler. Um, I mostly picked this up because <laughs> as a Canadian, um, any sort of adaptation of Anne of Green Gables is probably wrong. <laughs> and I want to, you know, really scrutinize something. Um, I kind of enjoy reading things that way. Um, it actually looks not too bad. And um, as far as I can tell, it looks like it follows the novel fairly closely um, without, you know, kind of overdoing things or kind of over-interpreting things. Um, so it actually looks like it's going to be pretty decent. Although um, from initial inspection, the illustration of Anne in particular, she just seems too old. Um, so I'm not really sure about that. Like she doesn't look, she doesn't look young enough in this title. But it could be interesting. Um, but yeah, as a Canadian, <laughs> just any adaptation of Anne of Green Gables is the wrong adaptation. <laughs> there is only one pure, true adaptation, and it has been done. So yeah, this has got a hard act to follow. Um, I picked up a little kind of indie type comic, uh, just quite small, um, and it is called Sex Fantasy by Sophia Foster Domino. Um, and the pages, they're all just uh, one comic per page, so the panels um, are quite large. Uh, so it should be an interesting read. I'm not entirely sure exactly what this is about. Um, but it could be interesting. The next title I ended up picking up is this uh, large publication from NBM Graphic Novels. This is Portugal by Pedrosa. Um, I don't know much about it. I think that this is a like a bestseller in France. The art in it is really beautiful and artistic in a kind of painterly way. And um, apparently his previous title called Equinoxes was an 
Eisner uh, nominee for Best International Material, or uh, Best U.S. Ad Adaptation of International Material. So um, it's got a lot of things going for it, and I have read the first couple of pages. It looks like it's going to be a pretty good story. Um, definitely more of a drama and kind of... Uh, I know I feel like it's a little bit more of a like self-exploration uh, about kind of your life as an artist. I think I could be completely wrong about that, but um, it looks like a really interesting title and it's definitely very beautiful to look at, so I'm looking forward to getting into this before I return it. Um, the next title that I end up picking up is Atomic Blonde. Um, originally published as The Coldest City. This is obviously a, uh, you know, movie tie-in cover. Um, and this is written by Anthony Johnson and Sam Hart. I am not particularly interested that it's a motion picture. I really could care less. And, um, but the art in it looks interesting. Um, I do kind of like spy stories or spy thrillers, so hopefully this will be good. Um, I don't know too much about it. I haven't actually heard all that much about it. I don't think I've watched anyone's reviews or anything of it, so and it's probably getting a little late. Like, uh, it's been out probably for a while. I've been on hold for this one for quite a while, so, um, you know, it is new-ish, but maybe not that new anymore. Uh, then I also have picked up Granville by Brian Talbot, a detective inspector LeBrock of Scotland Yard scientific romance thriller. Um, this is actually, obviously, from the condition of it, a pretty old title. Um, but I was just sort of interested in it. I did see someone talking about it, but I can't remember who it was now um, on their channel. And they weren't terribly impressed with it. But, and I can't even remember why, but something about how they had talk, talked about this actually made me interested in picking it up. It's a pretty short title, so I will check this out before I, or, you know, read it before I return it. The next title I picked up is a pretty new title. This is The Best We Could Do by Tai Bui. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her name. Um, this is a memoir, a graphic novel about... Uh, her family's flight from Vietnam, from war-torn Vietnam, during the Vietnam War in the 1970s. Um, it looks really nice, um, so I'm definitely interested in reading this. I really like the color in it. Um, so I hope that it is good. Um, I know that this one is actually on Hoopla, so if your library has Hoopla, you could probably read it on there if you're interested. So. Yeah, so I'm interested in checking this one out. Uh, it's not my favorite topic. I never like things about war, but hopefully this is more about the uh, immigration experience um, and less about war. And uh, But uh, it sounds like a really good title. Uh, I have also picked up Piper. This is by Jay Asher and Jessica Freeberg, illustrated by Jeff Stokely. Um, I think that this is just a reworking of the Pied Piper story. You can see here being followed by rats, which is basically what the story is. He plays his pipe and he gets rid of the rats. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think that this takes on sort of like a twist. Maybe it's more of a horror story. I don't really know. Um, I do recognize uh, Jay Asher as being an author of uh, some YA titles that I have never read, but I do hear his name. Uh, maybe 13 Reasons Why? Is that, is that why? What is... Oh yeah, it says right here in the back. Um, so... Uh, those are the titles that he is associated with. So it was a pretty popular title and I think also is a TV show. I don't really know. I don't keep on top of that. Um, but it's just a name that is familiar to me. I probably will not like this. I am suspecting. I actually think the art in it is pretty good. Um, it looks, looks pretty good. But uh, knowing that it is written by novelists, or at least a novelist, um, is usually means that the art is going to be underused or underutilized in telling the story and it means that the words are going to be overused in telling the story so um, this is always a really it's more of a gamble when you get an actual novelist writing a graphic novel they don't always know exactly what they're doing um, they can tell a story they just maybe can't tell it in this form uh, the next title I picked up is Antigone by Connor Williamson. It could be Antigone or it could be Antigone, but because there's a dash in it, I'm thinking Antigone. 
Um, if it's Antigone, it probably has something to do with Sophocles. Um, I, there isn't really anything about this on the book itself, like there's no notes or anything. Um, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell in the actual uh, camera here or in the video, but it, it looks like it's got this really um, off-white kind of matte color and kind of these odd grayscale. It almost looks like it was drawn on vellum. Um, so it's got it's just this very um, unusual palette, and that's why I ended up picking it up. You know, flipping through it, I don't actually think the it looks very interesting to me. I doubt this is going to be something I want to read, but I'm going to at least uh, make a little attempt at it, and we'll see what it's about. Uh, the next title is Cast No Shadow by Nick Tapolansky and Anissa Espinosa. Um, this looks like a cutesy, fantasy, romancy type story. Um, apparently it's about a young man who grows up in this town which has a lot of weird things going on. Um, he wasn't born with a shadow so he's one of the weird things and he goes to a haunted mansion and ends up falling in love with a ghost. It's all on the back so I don't think it's too much of a spoiler. Um, it looks pretty cute. Uh, the art just fairly simple. Yeah, so I don't know. I think this probably will be something that I like. I'm assuming. Um, who knows? But I like cutesy, weird stories like this. Um, this is the last title that I haven't officially read, but it is one that I have started reading. This is Alone by Chabute. Um, this is, uh, I think, mostly a story about a young man who lives in a lighthouse, but he was born with a deformity and so has never really like gone anywhere. The art is like this. It's really quite a heavy black and white scale, but it's um, and it's told um, mostly without text. It's really fantastic. Um, I have already read something else by Chabute, which I'll show you in a second. Um, Chabute really knows what they're doing. Uh, they really use the art to tell the story and the story just moves along and you naturally understand what's going on. Uh, dialogue is really not needed and it's uh, really beautiful. It's a large book but uh, probably won't get won't take too long to get through it. Now into titles that I have read and this pile is actually just as big if not bigger than that other pile so um, we may be here a while. I would recommend watching me on two times speed but you know that's just me. That's how I watch me so have at her. The next title is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, A Magical Story. Oh, that's nice. By Marie Kondo. A graphic novel to spark joy in life, work, and love. Um, so this is basically the storied version or fictional version of um, Marie Kondo's Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, which I have read. I have also listened to it. Um, the book the book that she has written is better than this. Um, this one is a little bit too silly. I think when you see sort of her kind of sitting there and like thanking all the things and um, you know waking the books up so that you can you know properly assess whether or not they bring you joy. Some of that stuff is a little uh, far-fetched in my opinion and it just seems extra silly seeing it here. Like I can understand why you would do that especially um, as a Shinto or ex-Shinto priestess why that would be really valuable to you but um, it comes off as weird in this book in particular. It feels a little bit more natural I think when she just instructs you but it is cute. It flows fairly well. The art is pretty decent. Um, it is in English reading direction. I don't know if that means it's flipped or not. Um, it's hard to say or flopped. And you know it's it's fine. It's very happy. Um, it definitely feels like a slice of life um, kind of life instruction Jose style manga. Um, it was fine but it's I actually don't think I'll be collecting this and I don't think it'll be joining my collection um, and I actually preferred the book and even then like it was okay although the one thing that this does better than the book is that it actually shows you how to fold your clothes because when she's talking about it in the book I don't think she necessarily describes it well enough that you really understand like what does she mean by 
folding the stuff. I don't think I'd ever fold my clothes that way, but um, I couldn't picture it when I was reading it or when I was listening to it. And this actually gave a really good like directions, step by step directions on how to, how she meant to fold. So I think at least from that standpoint, it was good. Uh, next, I read Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. This is volume one, The Awakening, or just Awakening. Um, I actually didn't finish reading this. I didn't particularly like it. It was okay. But um, the art is, like, the art is nice, but there's so much going on in it that I think it detracts from the story. Like, it slows the action down. And I think that this one's actually supposed to have a quicker pace. Um, and I also thought it was too brutal too fast. Um, there wasn't enough explanation to go along with just uh, really brutal acts. Um, so I didn't know how I was supposed to feel about these particular activities. Um, so I didn't particularly like it. I'm not interested in reading further. Um, it was okay. Uh, the next title I read was Black Cloud. This is again a volume one. Jason Latour, Ivan Brandon, Greg Hinkle, and Matt Wilson. Um, this is basically the story about a girl who I think can jump into dreams or into this like dreamscape and um, kind of rule there because it's dreams and she can enter the dreams and something has happened and she sort of left the dream world into a state of chaos and she's also kind of in a state of chaos in her regular world and now she has to like own up to all of her bad decisions I think that's what this is about it's pretty confusing it jumps quite frequently between uh, panels the art in it is not too bad um, there's some interesting characters in it but um, again, it was just, it was so confusing. I actually had fun reading it while I was reading it, but then, you know, when I got to the end, I, I don't really know what happened, and I don't really know, like, what I'm supposed to think of this. So, um, again, this is a title that I don't think I'm going to read any further in. Um, yeah. But, I, th yeah, I don't even know what I can say about it, because it was just, it was so confusing. Um, maybe I need to read it again, but even when I went on Goodreads to rate it, I think pretty much all of the reviews were, this is super confusing. <laughs> so, that, I think that's sort of the key word to what this is. The next title that I picked up or read is Cucumber Quest Volume 1. This is The Donut Kingdom by GGDG, which is a fantastic name. I would change my name to GGDG because um, how fun is that to say? Um, this is a kid's comic. Um, it's basically the story about a boy who's being sent on a quest, but he doesn't want to go on the quest because that's not his interest. He wants to study, and he brings along his sister, or actually she just sort of comes along, and it is her dream to become a knight or to, you know, be a hero. And so it is the two of them going on this quest adventure thing together and, uh, you know, saving the donut kingdom or the cucumber, I don't know. Uh, so they're saving something. The world, maybe. Um, it is pretty cute, like the illustration in it is very sweet. Um, it is drawn, uh, you can tell it's all computer illustration, um, but it is all drawn without lines, so it's just a color block contrast, which is an interesting way to illustrate. It definitely suits a kid's comic. Um, I thought it was fun. I certainly thought it was fun until about the halfway point, and then it just got boring. Um, it is a kid's comic, so maybe that's part of it, but I thought that it kind of started to meander. Um, it got a little off-topic, a little unfocused, and it was getting a little bit too joke-heavy, where, you know, you could have probably finished up the whole quest in this one book. So for the most part, like, I think kids would like it, but I don't know that I want to read any more of it because I don't even really remember what it was they were looking for, and it was such a simple plot structure, a simple concept, that it got lost in like how much is going on. Um, but So it was fine. Um, I don't really have too much to say about it in particular. I picked up Giant Days Volume 1. This is by Allison, Trayman, and Koger. Um, this is... 
not a new comic, obviously. It's been around for a while. Um, but I picked it up because it is talked about so often on BookTube, and so I am trying to read some of the more hyped titles. This is one of the few hype titles that I actually really enjoyed. I thought this was quite fun. I really liked the characters in it. I liked their friendship. I liked their uh, dynamic. I liked the kind of uh, nothing plot. I just liked the kind of slice of life aspect to it. Um, I really like that one of the characters actually experiences ASMR. Like, when do you ever find a character that even knows what that is? Or other people who know what that is? Because I relate to that a lot. Um, you know, who doesn't like to watch videos of people folding napkins? Like, I totally get that. Um, anyway, the, uh, the characters are really cute. The characters are, um fun friends, and I like the way that it starts a little bit more into their friendship. Um, you know, they've already, even though they've only been together for a short couple of weeks, they've already established what kind of friends they're going to be, and they're still new at their friendship that the story is still going to be interesting, so I actually think that it starts in a good place. I think it's going to be fun to read, I think it's going to be relatable, and uh, I'm looking forward to reading more, and I probably will place some more holds on this title in particular. Uh, the next title that I read is Sound of Snow Falling by Maggie Umber. Um, this is basically a story about, I think it's a story, about um, a, a couple of owls and they are uh, nesting and then they're rearing their chicks and that's pretty much it. it what it is. It's really just sort of um, it feels like a nature documentary, but it's wordless. Um, so it feels like you're sitting kind of out in the forest and just watching this nest and watching things happen. Um, but it is uh, disjointed in a way. The art is on a very dark palette. Um, you know, like sometimes you can see this so much better in a camera lens than you can just sort of in real life because it's so um, impressionistic and the illustrations are so dark. Like that one is quite difficult to uh, read. Um, so the illustration is dark because, you know, owls are nocturnal. Um, and then they've got these kind of weird life cycle uh, illustrations, uh, phases of the moon, you know, a chick developing in its egg. Um, it, you know, some of the panels read in the wrong direction or at least uh, in an unexpected direction, which isn't necessarily a good thing. I think that this worked really well as like um, a science documentary, but it does not work as a graphic novel in my opinion, so um, I don't necessarily recommend this to graphic novel readers, but if you're really interested in owls you might like it. Um, then I read Garbage Night by Jen Lee. This is published by Nobro. Um, this, I think, is two stories. Um, the f it's basically about kind of like almost a post-apocalyptic story. These anthropomorphic animals, they're trying to live in this town that's been completely abandoned, like a ghost town, and live off the garbage of the um, ex-residents, um, and then they decide to, uh, you know, like the garbage and stuff is running out, and so they decide to try and migrate to another village that might have uh, people and garbage. Um, it looks better than it is. It's just not a very compelling story. The characters are confusing. They're not particularly likable. Their actions aren't um, aren't very much explained. Like it's the the action between like from one panel to the next there should have been some more action between them to kind of understand where you're going. It was a little bit too quickly paced so that it got a little bit confusing. So I found it just sort of like a little a bit blah. This is the other Chabute title that I have just read. This is Park Bench. Um, it is a completely wordless title. I highly recommend it. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. Um, it is basically the story of a park bench. So here is a man painting the park bench. Um, it is basically set in place in the park and it is um, just the experience of that park bench. What happens on the bench um, the people who frequent it, some, you know, are not frequent visitors, some are frequent visitors, and so you see their life develop and kind of life around this particular park bench until it becomes um, useless and taken away. So 
I actually thought this was really moving. It's beautifully illustrated. It is um, incredibly easy to follow despite the fact that there is no text whatsoever. All of the characters are really distinct. You absolutely know what's going on. You know the feeling that's occurring on this. It's, it's really just wonderful. So I highly recommend this title. I gave it five out of five stars. I read the first volume of Snot Girl by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung with Mickey Quinn and Marae Odomo, which is basically the story about a girl who is, um, you know, like a fashion blogger and her life, you know, appears all together on the internet, but of course it's not all together in real life. Um, she is, of course, friends with some other bloggers, but she's not really friends with them, but, you know, they all have the same kind of life. And then something happens and she ends up making friends with another up-and-coming blogger, and uh, that blogger potentially has more to her than meets the eye, I guess. The cover is interesting, I guess. The title is sort of interesting, but the story itself um, I was kind of bored. I really didn't like the characters. Um, I didn't care. I don't care still. And <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm really like dissing all of these comics that I've read recently, but uh, for the most part they were all kind of in the average range. This just seemed average. Um, not enough happened in this beginning story and it wasn't new enough. You know, that story of um, you know, a fashion blogger and her life is, you know, way different behind the lens. Well, of course it is. Like, I would rather see a different story or a different side to that character, and that's what this is in particular at the moment. Um, I don't think I'll read any further. The next thing that I read is Ant Colony by Michael DeForge. I ended up picking this up because I had read Styx Angelica by the same author, and I really enjoyed that one, and they said um, or lost the, a lot of the reviews said that was his most kind of conventional story, which might be true. Um, this one is a story about ants, and you can see that it's pretty simple illustrations. Uh, the story is basically about a very small handful of ants, and they're um, kind of questioning their role in the colony, um, and then the colony is basically destroyed, and now they're questioning how they should... Uh, reform that colony. <laughs> so that's basically what this is. It's a trip. It's really weird. I don't know that I recommend it. Um, I don't know who I would recommend this to, um, but it was an interesting read. I liked the Sandelic Cup better, that's for sure. Um, and then the last title that I ended up reading is A Girl Called Echo, Volume 1. This is um, the Pemmican War series, I think by Katharina Vermette, Scott B. Henderson, and Donovan Yassiek. I think I could be pronouncing that wrong. Um, this is basically the story of a 13-year-old Métis young girl who is in foster care and now is just starting a new school and sort of that experience, but um, as she's in uh, her history class, she's starting to get glimpses of the distant past and kind of what um, the history um, of Métis in that particular area, um, I believe probably in Winnipeg, since the author is from Winnipeg, um, what the Métis experienced and how they kind of were part of the history of that area and um, how it affected them and how they affected history. Um, but she is like actually getting kind of visions of the past of and experiencing that. Um, it is a very short book. I think it's only like 25 pages. Wrong, 44 pages. Um, it is very short. It barely feels like an introduction and it's over. Um, it is only volume one, so hopefully there'll be more. I actually found that this was a different story. I've read a lot of titles by Indigenous authors and this one seems like a new story. Um, so I'm really interested in seeing more of where this one goes. Um, I think the character is actually more interesting and I think she might have a little bit more depth to her than some of the other titles that I've read. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where this title goes because I think there's a lot of potential for this one in particular. Um, the art in it is not my favorite. Um, I think it's mostly the line drawing. But um, the story in it um, I think is a good one and I think it 
needs to be told and I'm looking forward to reading more of it so I probably will be checking more of it out when it is released hopefully soon. So that is everything that I have currently checked out of the public library. I have a lot to read but I obviously read a lot so it's not a big deal and obviously I'm going to have a ton more to pick up next week so um, yeah, it's just a constant revolving door uh, going to the public library and borrowing graphic novels. Um, anyway, that is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.